Okay, so in this video, I'm going to explain the concept of residual stresses developed during welding procedures in the most simple way in order both for me and you to understand the residual stresses forever and thus being able to, you know, understand what's happening during welding. So I want you to imagine, as you can see over here, let's go to the first graph here, that um, we have three columns, right? And uh, this basically we have a construction, right? This is completely stable. This is also stable. And then we have three columns. In the time increment of zero in the beginning, we don't have any temperature. And therefore, there are no stresses nowhere, right? But after some time in the time increment of T1, uh, we are hitting only the column in the middle, right? Over here. Let's say we apply some kind of temperature in a way. Now, what is happening is that because this column in the middle is being heated, what does it want to do is basically it wants to expand. But because of equilibrium reasons, uh, and those other two columns in the right and the left side are not going to change because they're not heated, what is happening is because this one in the middle wants to expand, it's been restrained by the other two. And therefore, what is happening is we have compressive stresses being developed in the column in the middle. Now, after some time in uh, T2, which is greater than T1, that's what I meant to say here, uh, T1 and T1, um, after some time, we allow the column in the middle to be cooled down. And during cooling, uh, the column in the middle, what it wants to do, it wants to contract, it wants to shrink. But again, because of equilibrium reasons, what happens? We Basically, there is a tensile stress that is being developed in the middle column for equilibrium reasons. Now, if we think about something else here, right? If we have exactly the same construction Sorry about why does this happen? Wait, give me a second. All right. Let's say we have the exact same construction. Again, three columns. What happens if we heat everything and cool down everything with the exact the same heat treatments, heat cycle, right? So let's say that the column one, column two, and column three are all being heated to the same temperature. And therefore, they're all cooled down by the same rate. So T1 equals T2 equals T3. Then what happens? They, you know, uh, expand all together and then they shrink all together. And therefore, there are no differences in the stresses and there are no residual stresses created, exactly because they all follow exactly the same heat treatment cycle. But on the previous example I explained, we can understand that because of the different uh, heat treatment that the column in the middle is being withstanded, right? It's undergoing. Then this means that the residual stresses will be created because at the end over here, we can see that we have tensile stresses and compressive stresses. Tensile stresses in the middle for over here and for equilibrium reasons, compressive stresses. Now, if we take exactly the same thing and um, we just think about it for welding, let's see what happens. All right, so uh, as you can see, I created something that looks like a Frankenstein uh, made <laughs> welding. Uh, yeah, I'm an engineer, I'm not a designer. So um, what you, we can see over here is basically um, a welding, right? Uh, this is where, let's say, uh, the welding takes place here is where the basically the, the, the material has been molded molten and here we have the different stages so for this place here this is where the heat is the highest t1 then for this place here we have a temperature which is lower than the previous one because it's been cooled down and this area here is when the material has been solidified and therefore the temperature is zero right and again we know that during welding, okay, this is uh, this is the area where the fusion, this is the fusion zone where the temperatures are higher. Then here we have the heat affected zone, which is basically the zone that has been affected 
by the heating, but it wasn't melted during the welding procedure. And over here, right, uh, we have the parent metal uh, where it's not really affected at all. And that's exactly why we can see that basically the temperature follows this kind of profile, right? Now, for the first case over here, where we have the the mold, uh, the molten material, the molten material due to the welding, we know that the stresses are almost zero during the in the fusion zone. Why? Because it's molten, and therefore it doesn't really um, have any kind of stress. But right next to it, the material has been heated. Right, this is the heat affected zone. And because it's been heated, remember what we discussed before with the columns, it wants to expand. But for equilibrium reasons, it's been restrained by the rest of the weld, and therefore it's been compressed. So here we have compressive stresses being created. And again, for equilibrium reasons, what's going to happen? We're going to have the rest of the material being on tensile stress. Now, Let's go a little bit backwards in our world. Over here, we have a lower temperature because the material is starting to be cooled down, but not completely cooled down. And right now, what's happening again? Remember, it's been, it, it's been cooled down and therefore it wants to shrink. But for equilibrium reasons, it goes under a tensile stress by the rest of the material. Therefore, we have tensile stresses over here. Not huge tensile stresses, but we do have tensile stresses. And again, for equilibrium reasons, what's happening, the rest of the material is being in compressive loading stress. Uh, and here we have the residual stress. So this is when the material has been basically cooled down, right? When the temperature is zero, well, it's basically room temperature. Um, so Exactly like before, the material here in the fusion zone, it's been cooled down, it wants to shrink the rest of the material for equilibrium reasons, don't want to, doesn't want to allow it to shrink. Therefore, we have tensile stresses being created and these are quite high. And for equilibrium reasons, we're going to have compressive stresses the rest of the material. So this is how we can explain residual stress in the most simple way, because what happens during welding is there is an uneven thermal distribution, right? And this uneven thermal distribution is what creates the residual stress. And that's what I want you to have in mind. And that's what I have in mind, that residual stresses right, are being developed because of the, of the uneven thermal distribution during welding right because during welding right what happens is we hit the material and then it's been cooled down and this heating and cooling is what creates this and it's not only the fact that we have different heating and cooling rates as you know in the welding but we also have different cooling and heating rates in the different uh, metallurgical zones of the material which means that different material different the different, uh, <laughs> the different um, metallurgical zones are undergoing different thermal cycles. And therefore, this will affect how and where the stresses will be redistributed uh, when the stresses are uh, created. But also, if we have different chemical compositions, this means that also different phases will be created. For example, in uh, electron beam welding on uh, ferritic steels, these different thermal distributions, these different thermal cycles in the heat affected zone will create different uh, microstructures because of the solid state phase transformation. Because if we think that we have one area that's been highly heated and then rapidly cooled down, this might create more tensile. Whereas if the thermal cycle is lower, then this might create bainite or it might create per light, et cetera, et cetera. This is something for another video, but I just want you to have this uh, for this video. The residual stresses are being created due to the uneven thermal distribution. That's all.
end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon.